Hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Butterfly Talk. Today we're going to talk about how to take care of yourself, mama. You need it and you deserve it. So let's get started. Hello, everybody. This is Sylvia, and this is Butterfly Talk. This is a new episode. This is episode six of my YouTube channel. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce you to our new little girl. Uh, this is Angel, and this is my attempt of making 2020 a little better for my family because 2020 has been just, you know, just. We will look back in time and think, what the F happened, right? So anyway, I've always wanted a white Persian cat. And I finally picked her up um, earlier this month. This is still September, I think, right? Yes. And this is the best cat I've ever had. She never uses her claws. Nikki can hold her. And she doesn't move. It's amazing. So I say hello to Angel. She's the best. She's the best. All right, so. Now that we got that out of the way, this episode is about mamas, take care of yourselves. And I know how hard it is, trust me. I know how hard it is. Um, you know, I was looking at my notes. Um, how do we get through this coronavirus, taking care of ourselves? It's on top of everything else, right? Um, so, you know, I just spend my time just watching a lot of TV and I gotta tell you I found a lot of amazing TV out there I've seen so many amazing shows um, uh, one of them is away for example on Netflix that was beyond and the one I'm watching now is upload that was fun but I'll have another blog to talk about my TV stuff um, uh, today's mug is this I love this mug. It says, let your heart flow with kindness. And there's even a little heart on that side. So I love that. And then today, nothing. I'm not wearing a shirt. I'm just wearing something cute because I wanted every mom out there to be cute. And I love shirts that, um, because I'm in my 50s, I don't like wearing those shirts where your arms seem a little bigger than they are, right? So I like to cover them up. And this is, I love these bell sleeves and stuff. It's beautiful. So anyway, um, taking care of yourself. So I saw this picture. I'm going to see post if I can put it here. Um, and it really just made me think. Um, yes, being a special need parent makes you feel really old. Uh, if not physically, mentally. I've been through so much in the past Gosh, Nikki's almost 24 years. And before that, because, you know, before that I had a miscarriage at eight weeks. And before that I had a baby that was still born at full term. Um, and so I feel like in the past 25 years I've aged mentally at least 100 years. I mean, I've lived so much in those years. I The grief, the everything. So, um... But it makes me realize that I really need to take care of myself more than ever. Um, because when you feel good about yourself, it reflects on your health and you're a better parent, you're a better mom. You don't, you don't sit there, you know, blaming your son or your daughter or your children or anybody in your, in your life for, okay, because of you, I don't have time to take care of myself. You need to just two minutes, five minutes, you know. You, you got to do it. You got to do it. So my first, uh, first and foremost is nutrition. Now I'm lucky. I've always said that my grandparents, my dad's parents owned a little mini farm. And so we grew up eating vegetable season, vegetables that were in season. And so my dad was big in that. My dad is going to be 90 in December and he still has his little 
uh, little garden and it grows all kinds it's not very big but he grows so much food in there it's beyond he not only he feeds himself he feeds my sisters and he feels my aunt my aunt is 87 years old and lives by herself um we don't know for how long but you know she never got married and never had any children so she's now alone and so um, she has friends, you know, but, you know, my dad helps her too. My dad, my 90-year-old dad takes care of his little sister still. Isn't that amazing? So anyway, I grew up eating. We used to eat vegetables every day because we had so much. We also had fruit. Uh, my two favorite fruit trees that my grandparents had was my fig tree and the apricot tree. Now, the fig tree was huge in my family. I used to climb up on the tree and read a book when I was, you know, 10 or whatever, and just pick a pick a fig and eat it. It was great. It was amazing. So anyway, this all to say that I think that's why my, my grandma lived to be 102. The way she eats, what she ate, was amazing. And so my dad, my mom, um, I mean, everybody, we were all farmers on my dad's side, we're all farmers. And so they ate good. Um, and so um, there's something to be said about eating fresh. And so another thing that I think I'm blacked out is the fact that there were no McDonald's in Italy growing up. And so I never ate a burger, burger until I was 17, almost 18 actually. First burger... And first French fries when I came to America, um, and I'm like, okay, I'm not impressed. And so till this day, I prefer. This is what I do when I'm when I don't have to cook for my husband or my son or anybody. I take a cauliflower or a cabbage, big cabbage, and I put it in the instant pot, uh, and I put it in the instant pot for less than ten minutes, seven minutes, and. Um, and when it's ready, it's all nice and soft. This is what I'm going to eat today, by the way. I have bought a new cauliflower. I'm going to put it in an instant pot. And it's so much food. Like, think about it. A whole thing of cauliflower. And then I'm going to drop it, oil and vinegar on it, and a can of tuna. I love tuna. But not, it has to be solid tuna in oil. And I know that's bad, but you're going to put olive oil on I mean, I put olive oil on it anyway, so might as well use the olive oil that's infused with the tuna, right? And that is so much food. It fills me up. I, you know, I don't really need to eat any more than that. Um, and if I want something sweet, I have my fig tree in the back. Yes, I got a fig tree. So anyway, and this is fig season, so it's great. So anyway, nutrition is so important. It's garbage in, garbage out, right? And so the better you eat, the better you feel, and the more energy you have, it all goes together. You know, my family growing up, we didn't really eat steaks or anything like that. My family was more into fish. Um, so it made me think, I heard someone say, when I was watching Big Brother, I think, that they were pesca something. So they eat fish and, and, and dairy but not meat, right? And I think that's most of the time I am that, even though I love sausage, I love pork chops and all that, but I think I eat more fish. So remember, junk in, junk out, cook for yourself, know what's in your food, because that's what's really gonna affect your health. And uh, when you're healthier, you can take care of your family better, right? So that's it, that's number one, that was nutrition. Number two, exercise, oh boy. I hate exercising. Everybody knows that knows me knows I hate it. But I can walk. I'll walk all the way to Timbuktu. My older sister and I agreed that once I move to Europe, back to Europe when my husband retires um, in probably around 2026 or so, uh, we're going to do the Camino de Santiago. So for those that don't know, that's like you walk the whole length of Spain all the way to Santiago. And it's... Um, it's um it's a religious walk but it's also a transformative walk um and so i can walk i'll walk i'll hike I'll, i don't mind that but exercise per se i just i just can't do it so i just walk the neighborhood that's it well i listen to audiobooks all right number th uh three sleep oh my god sleep when nikki was born i stopped sleeping for three and a half years. 
and I stopped sleeping for three and a half years because he had all these issues. You know, he has recessive dystrophic EB, and so he couldn't swallow. He he would wake up in the middle of the night hungry. Um, it wasn't until we got his G tube when he was three and a half that I slept through the night. I couldn't believe it. What happened? And it's so important for your health. So do whatever you got to do to even just grab a nap here and there and everywhere. It's so important. Um, four, do something just for you at least once a week. And I'm not talking about watching TV because, you know, that's that's easy. That's, that's not taking care of you. You need to pamper yourself. Um, just take a bath. Take a nice bath. Maybe go to a yogi, uh, a yogi, yeah, a yoga class once a week. Um, oh, do a hobby. I mean, I take I take up a lot of hobbies and then I stop and then I restart, right? And that's that's my biggest um, thing about me that I don't like. That I start the piano and I start. Oh, I I'm there. I'm playing the song and then the next day I'm tired of it. But then a month later, I want to do it again. You know, so maybe there's nothing wrong with that. But that kind of bothers me that I'm like that. You know, I like to continue doing it. But if you have a hobby, an instrument you want to play, anything, you know, cross stitch, anything, anything that you could do for yourself, do it because it makes you feel better, right? Um, now, there's also something to be said about taking care of yourself per se, whether there is taking care of your skin. My mom was a big into taking care of her skin. Um, and so I grew up with that. So I've always taken care of my skin, especially since uh, when I moved to Arizona, it was so dry. My skin, even I was in my 20s and my skin, you could see it flake off. I couldn't believe it. So I started, even though I was already kind of doing it, but not to the extent that I started doing it when I moved to Arizona. I was in my 20s and I never stopped. And at this point, I use really, you know, because I'm in my 50s now, so I got to get stuff from mature skin. Um, you know, my skin is kind of like drooping down. I don't like that or having spots. And so I always try to take care of my skin. And that makes me feel good about myself, right? So I do it. Um, of course, another way to take care of yourself is take care of your weight. But if you eat good, then you don't have to worry about it, right? There you go. Um, some people love wearing clothes that makes them feel good. I'm one of those people. I I only wear t-shirts around the house. I love t-shirts like anybody else. I might, I might just wear t-shirts if I go to an amusement park or something. But... If I just go out shopping, I like to wear something cute. I don't know why people always tell me I'm overdressed, but I'm Italian. Italians overdress. That's just how it is. That's always with us. I grew up knowing that every Saturday we would, um, as a family, we would just at 2 p.m. we would leave and we would go. A lot of the time, most of the time, we go visit my grandma. But if we didn't on the rare occasion, then on Sunday we would go to wherever place, uh, to the park or to uh, whatever, we dif did different things. We always dressed nice. Um, that's how I grew up and that just makes me feel good about myself and that's that's what I do. And then of course there's also the makeup. I know there's a lot of women who don't like makeup and that's just absolutely fine. You know, my older sister, she she's the biggest tomboy you would ever known, but she has confidence uh, to a zoo. Uh, she never put a lipstick on. As a matter of fact, one time we were doing a... What are you doing there, little cutie? She's making some noise. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> so my sister, we were doing a family photo, and my mom asked my sister, can you at least put some lip gloss or something on? She's like, no, nope, this is how I am. Take, take me or leave me, you know, kind of thing. But that's how she is, and she has confidence out to a zoo. I wish I had her confidence. I don't. I gotta, I gotta do stuff with my hair. I gotta, I gotta makeup on, and and maybe that's bad. But you know, I like looking good, and my husband loves going out with me because you know I turn heads, and I, it makes me feel good that he feels good, and I'm like, okay, well that's, he's the sweetest man, my husband. Oh, I love him, I love him to death. So um, now um, let me see what else I wrote here. 
the claws. Okay, um, of course, I didn't turn off my phone. Sorry about that. Okay. So, I know the clothes are expensive, um, but I started when I was pregnant with Connor, and he's 17 now, so 17 years ago. I started, or 18, I guess. I started going to thrift stores. There's a big thrift store here in Lancaster, I'm in California, and it's called American Way. And that store is so huge. I, you know, I didn't want to spend all this money that I didn't have on pregnancy clothes that I wear for two months, you know. And so I went to the thrift store and I found so many things and they were basically new because obviously whoever owned them before wore them for a month or two, right? That's the good thing about shopping for thrift stores, uh, shopping for maternity clothes at thrift stores. And so that's when I started really thinking about, um, you know, style because you go there and you could, I could go out of there for $10. I would come out of there with a huge bag of clothes. And if something didn't fit right, whatever. I spent a dollar on this pair of jeans. If I don't like them, this fine. I'll just give them away. And I have my little giveaway box just in case something doesn't fit. And, um, and that's when I find kind of started finding my, my my style and lately especially this year that we're in the lockdown and we can't really do anything I started following blogs from uh, women in their 50s who showed their tips and tricks about style about makeup about all kinds of creams and whatever else and it just makes me feel good um listening to them and, and see what their experience is and where to get whatever and I think you need to do what makes you feel your best. And if you do that, you're ahead of the game. You can take care of your family. You don't feel like you're missing out on anything, you know. Um, and uh, that's it. Now, last but not least is your mental health. Uh, mental health is huge because you could have everything going on fantastic in your world. And you still think your life sucks. And so uh, it's all in how you see things, right? So one thing that I started last year when Nikki was hospitalized um, last year, for those that don't know, uh, Nikki's my son with recessive dystrophic EB. He had these G-tube issues last year and he was in and out of the hospital for six months. He was hospitalized for two weeks here and then a week there, and then three weeks here, and then two weeks there, and then the last stretch was six weeks. And that was just, you know, you gotta get your head together when you're just stuck in the hospital, you know, because otherwise you go crazy, you go nuts. And so I started journaling last year, just every day. I would just, you know, nowadays it's more like a, once a week maybe. Um, but what I do in it, I, I mostly vent. But not only vent, I always try to find something positive that happened that day, you know, to make yourself feel, okay, this is not all bad. There's something really little good in here that happened today. And so uh, also be mindful of what you watch uh, as far as TV goes or videos on YouTube only watch something that makes you feel good. Um, why watch the news if you know it's going to drive you crazy, you know? Um, just don't do that to yourself, you know? Just don't. Um, most of the time, and I'm not talking all of the time, but most of the time, um, whatever happened in Syria, you know, yesterday, or whatever happened in Portland, or, or whatever it is, it's not gonna help your day. You know, you can be mindful and caring and everything, but if hearing about all this stuff is gonna make your day awful, and here comes the little princess here, little angel. Um, if you're, if you're gonna, if your day is, <laughs> he's so cute. If it's gonna make your day worse, just don't. At least, you know, if you know you're having a bad day, you know. Um, so me 
Be mindful of what you watch. Be mindful of what you read. Be mindful of who you follow on social media. You know, if you have a friend that's constantly negative, 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 just, you don't have to unfriend them, you can just unfollow them. I've unfollowed so many people. Um, it's insane, especially this political stuff. It's just driving me insane. I've unfollowed a lot. Um, and um, I love... As many of you know, inspirational quotes, I love to start my day with inspirational and just try to make myself feel better. And that's the reason why I started the sleepingangel.com, the quotes. Um, it just helps me in some subliminal way. I don't even know what it is. Um, uh, I, and so I'm just the day is better when I start it with inspiration, with love, with kindness, with everything that makes your day better, right? Um, because you'll have so much going on and EB moms know there comes a point in your day when you'll have to change bandages and they're looking awful and your, your child calls you that he's in a lot of pain and it's like there's a, several times during the day where all you want to do is cry. And God knows I did my share uh, of crying. But I refuse to um, let that be who I am every day, all the time. And so I try to make my day better. And so if you have friends that constantly post negative, just unfollow them. There's no need for that. If you, you know, if it makes you mad, just don't, just don't, just keep doing it. And then if you're that friend and you keep posting negative stuff, please stop. There's no need for that. There's no need for hate. There's no need for hate in any way. You shouldn't be posting hateful stuff on social media to begin with, you know. So, um, anyway, that is my suggestion for the day, right? Now, my hair is a little weird today. I used my new um, waver, right? I love, I love long hair, but it it's, uh, takes a long time to... Um, it takes a lot of work to take care of them. And uh, when you put it up in a ponytail all the time, um, they get, I get to lose a lot of hair. My hair is really, really thick. It's like I always say, I could just, you know, clean my house with my broom because it's really, really thick. I inherited my um, hair from my mom. And Connor has my hair, so it's really thick stuff. But anyway, um, Whatever you do to make you feel better. I feel better with longer hair. That's awesome. My older sister loves her short hair. You would know, she, I can't remember the last time she had long hair, my sis, older sister ever. And again, she feels good about herself. So let's, I think we need to stop judging each other and uh, do what makes us feel better as we feel better. We're better parents, we're better wives. For better parents, better everything, right? So that's my video for the day. I hope uh, I help somebody. Um, if you have, uh, if you want to suggest a topic, uh, post it below in the comments and subscribe it if you like. Turn the bell, the bell, subscribe and bell. And that's it. I hope you have a nice rest of the week and take care of each other.